So kernels are what really do the work on an OpenCL device. This is the simplest kernel you can have. It doesn't actually do anything, so it's pretty useless, but it does demonstrate the structure of one. And you'd store these either in text files with the CL extension, although technically you could choose whatever extension you want, but the adopted extension is .cl. Or you could store them directly as um, a string in your source file. So they must have kernel at the front, return void, and take at least one argument. Although some may compile without any arguments, but you'd be pretty foolish to write a kernel that did that because it would not be able to do anything useful. So here's a more interesting example. So it's taking this uh, data array as an argument. It's calling get global ID zero on it. Get global ID is a unique identifier for each work item executing a kernel. So if this was the first one being executed, this is most likely going to be zero. So I'll get the first element in the data array, multiply it by two, and then store it back. And this zero is um, the dimension. So if you're just using a one dimensional array, then zero, you'd use zero. Zero is the most common thing you're going to be using, unless you're dealing with multi dimensional arrays. And there's also get local ID, which uniquely identifies a work item in a work group. You only need to use this when you're trying to properly synchronize work items in work groups, which are sharing local data. And we'll get into that later. And so this diagram shows you the importance of selecting a work group size. So on my AMD graphics card, my maximum work group size is 256. So for every work group, I can have 256 work items executing at the exact same time. And if I don't fill it properly, so if I only had like eight work items in there, then I'm going to have a bad day. The performance is not going to be optimal. I want to fill my work groups with as many work items as I can shove in there. And I'll show you how to do that. 